All right, so hello everyone. Um, I wish I could tell you that we're going to go fishing today, um, but um, it's that time of year to where uh, I haven't been able to make very many fishing videos because I've had to be at work quite a few days. Um, just part of the job, part of this time of year. <laughs> Thankful to have the job that I have. Um, so I've been trying to knock out some of these little videos that just more informative, able to just share a little bit of information with you, hopefully to help you catch a few more fish. Um, one of the things that, um, I want you to know though about the videos that, that I've, a few videos that I've made, uh, I did take the time to make a playlist out of them. So when you first go to the front page of the channel, uh, Clifford's Real Life, you actually should see down there to where everything is divided up by playlist. So if you wanted to watch videos about a jig, then you should be able to click on that and watch videos about a jig. Now I separated the finesse jig from the regular jig because I started to accumulate now that I've got really been blessed with some really good rods um, that are very lightweight and allow me to fish that jig a little better. Um, I, um, I've divided those up from regular just bass jigs and finesse jigs and even swim jigs. So there's spinner baits, there's crank baits, there's all kind of little divisions there, the tight line, the drop shot, little techniques there here and there that just my few little inputs on them or a few suggestions or catch sometimes fish catches too. I also got one little section uh, about fishing techniques and stuff. So if you want different ones or want to learn different things, then should be able to go to that as well. Anyway, I was just kind of mentioning that just for your own benefit. That way you don't have to sit there and watch through every video if you don't want to. You can just go specifically to one. Um, but what I wanted to talk to you today uh, we're getting into that summertime and you show you see me show throwing a lot uh, this 5 16th a little finesse jig and it produces a lot of fish uh, and a lot of times but what I'm going to tell you right now during the summertime this little 5 16th right here it's not that it goes away but I have learned over the years that this 5 16th jig has a place, has a season, has a time of day. And that's what we're gonna talk about a little bit, okay? Because it's big brother becomes a very big part of the style of jig that I try to fish this time of year. And I thank God that now uh, I have the setups that I have because they're lighter weight to allow me to fish jigs a little more. Um, they're not as heavy on my shoulders. Um, I'm off today and I would be able to go, but this is the time of year that there's a holiday today and it's a pretty popular weekend. So there's usually a lot of boat traffic on the water and I've tried a couple years to try to go this time of year. And just to be honest with you, between as many days that I've worked in a row, um, it'd be better for me today just to stay back and just uh, rest my legs, rest my feet. Uh, for those of you who pray, uh, it seems like the doctors have told me that I've got arthritis in my, at least in my left foot right now. Um, I know I've got them in my hand somewhat too, so it's just part of getting older. You know, it's, uh, it, it doesn't hurt all the time, uh, but it's just part of the things we deal with in life, uh, just how it works out. Um, hopefully, um, everything will eventually which i know that as, as older we get the less things we're able to do but that's why we spend more time teaching others because um just from our experiences and stuff that's kind of what i try to do um so let's go on with just talking about the finesse jig in summertime so i learned and i used to fish the same lake over and over and over again uh, i've told you that a couple of times i used to fish a little shallow water lake Okay, that little lake um, had um, real shallow water. We're talking about the deepest part in that lake, maybe 30 feet. Um, a quarter of the lake would maybe be in that 20 foot range, 15, 20 feet. Uh, that 30 foot would only been like a 10%. And majority of the lake would have been, I'm gonna say 10 to 12 feet or less. Okay, so, 
the experiences that I had there, a little 5 16 jig would have been awesome because a little 5 16 jig had actually become somewhat of a heavyweight. But what you normally did, and what you'll hear a lot of people talking about in summertime, is well, let's go down to a 10 inch worm and a little bitty weight. Well, that lake, it was so shallow that a lot of times I used that 10 inch worm weightless just with the 5 odd hook. And I was very successful, caught a lot of big fish. But when I started spending more time, uh, and my experience fishing Cumberland and uh, Wood Creek and lakes like that for a while, was we would go at night. So at night, that same type of technique would work. Okay, you could go down to that little eighth ounce weight, quarter ounce weight, uh, big 10 inch worm, big things, and you could be very successful. Okay, and you would catch some nice fish and sometimes catch quite a few fish. But the problem is, uh, when I started fishing those lakes during the daytime, I really struggled at first. Um, if you, even if you watch the videos, you'll see that I really struggled at first. Just getting a basic bite, and I followed a lot of people's suggestions, and I did catch a lot of fish on simple little techniques like a shaky head, like a drop shot, and uh, I have caught a lot of nice fish doing that. Don't get me wrong. But one of the things that I quickly realized was that the 516 stick, if you could take the pain of letting it sink slowly, yes, you were successful. But as soon as you had any type of, which happens a lot this time of year, you had a lot of boat traffic, okay? So you're being moved around a lot. You also had a lot of bright sunny skies. Okay, so you had a lot of days there's not a lot of wind because we're closer to that summertime. So I struggled a lot with getting bit on the 516th jig unless I was in the back of the pockets. Because of course the water was a little bit shallower. Now, what I started doing was I started going to a different size jig and it completely changed the way that I was able to fish and you wouldn't think so a lot of times we don't realize it but simple change of weight you see a lot of people talk about uh, changing weight because it makes the, the, the fall it makes it faster and that's what triggers the fish that's not really what I was after I really wasn't after a quicker uh, moving bait in order to trigger a reaction I was simply wanting something that was this similar type profile because I already know that I'm going to get bit on this because uh, it's it's a very simple, it doesn't really have anything that um, a bass needs to be afraid of. Most of the time they'll grab it as it's sinking, you know. So I needed something that would just get to the bottom and stay there a little bit more and a little bit easier to fish. So what I went to was a 7 sixteenths. And you wouldn't think that that would be that much difference. Of course, the head, you can probably barely see it. But <coughs> the head on these baits, you can tell the difference. Okay. It's it's a considerable, diff considerable difference between the two. So I started to learn a lot of little things when I started fishing the 716s. Number one, yes, I could cover a little more water because I could move it faster. Okay. But one of the other things that I noticed is I could keep it on the bottom a little better. Um, I could do several different things with this. I could sit there and throw it out and drag it, of course, like most people fish their jigs. But what I could also do was when I was sitting there and I could... If I felt a log or felt something down there, I could shake it in place. And then it seemed to me like a lot of times they would come over and grab onto it and hold onto it even a little better. Now I have, I've, I've been around people and friends that even that they half ounce is what they threw 90% of the time. And it does seem to trigger a bigger bite a lot of times because it is that heavier weight and it does have that little faster. There are plenty of times that I've casted it out and 
I I really like using this, especially in clear water. That's probably my favorite time to use it. A lot of times, when when I see the color of the water, and I see that the water is somewhat clear, I'll start out with this five sixteenths, even on a lake like Cumberland, early of the morning, because a lot of those fish, I believe, from years ago, from actually been on the water, I believe a lot of those fish feed at night, and especially those bigger smallmouths. And I think that as the day progresses, I've noticed they pull away further from the bank. Well, I start out in the morning with this 5 16 and I'm specifically looking for little corners, little pockets, little cuts down the main lake, but I'm really paying attention to any type of wood cover that I can physically see. Now, I know going down the bank, everybody's like, well, everybody can do pretty good, you know, beating the bank. It's not just beating the bank because you're looking for specific contours in that main. You'd be surprised how many times you you can throw to the whole wall, but that one little two foot dip into that wall is where the smallmouth is. Because you got to remember that on a lake like Cumberland, uh, it it actually has quite a bit of current, and because of that current that it has, a lot of times those fish. Are on the main lake therefore the current's a little stronger uh, and especially places like I like to fish because it's pretty close to that old channel um, what tends to happen is just like on a creek or a stream you would throw where the boulder is you would throw where that water kind of makes a little eddy you throw them behind it because that's where those fish are resting going to jump out same thing happens on a lake like Lake Cumberland um, the same thing happens believe it or not uh, on any type of system that has any current whatsoever sometimes this little 5 16 uh, if I'm going to go deeper than say 10 15 feet then it doesn't become effective because as it sinks down especially there it, it kind of moves away from them a little bit, all right? I'm not saying that it's like a ripping current and it's gonna move away from them. But it just, it doesn't seem to be as effective when you get away from that 15 foot. Uh, this 7 16 on the other hand, and I'll tell you something else that I've noticed. I did a little video not too long ago about different trailers. It seems to me like the different trailer that you use People don't realize this, and I didn't realize it until I actually started doing it. Your trailer will determine how easy it is for you to peg that on the bottom. So if you use a trailer that has an action, the more action you put on a trailer, on a jig, the harder it's going to be for you to keep that bait on the bottom. So in other words, the slower you're going to have to move that bait to not pick it up off the bottom because that little bit of action is going to create lift and it's going to pick that bait up therefore even if you think even dragging the rod tip if you were standing on your boat pointing the rod tip down almost touching the water and dragging you got to remember that that's like 25 30 feet down so you're in an angle so every drag that you make if it has any action whatsoever on that trailer like say for instance if you had a strike king crawl on the back of it one of those flapping it has those flapping arms on it it picks that bait up off the bottom and then the longer that you hold that up you are basically picked it up off the bottom this little trailer right here just a regular super chunk zoom super chunk or any type of just flat basically that doesn't have a lot of tr a lot of kicking movement it does pick it up but not nearly as much it's a lot easier to drag now what a lot of people do and i've done this myself there will be a time of year that you'll see me talk about it i go to that three quarter uh, i have to change and i have to go to more of a football head but i go to a three quarter and you say well why do you do that when i go to a three quarter i'm no longer worried about and that's something else with this seven sixteenths when i throw this seven sixteenths i'm no longer throwing at the bank now i'm throwing 10 foot off the bank you say well seriously yeah and what i do is i throw literally so if you're looking at the bank and you start when you stand back from it 
and you look at the bank and you see where that clear water ends and you can kind of stop seeing the bottom that's where my cast starts i said well why do you do that i do that because of efficiency i'm eliminating six foot away from the bank towards the bank because it's crystal clear water those fish aren't there i'm throwing my bait here and you say well it's going to pendulum yeah because 90 percent of the time my bites are coming between the boat which is sitting a little bit further away from the bank and six foot off from the bank so it's between that margin so and that's after like nine or ten o'clock now when i'm throwing this little five sixteenths jig sure i'm gonna get i'm gonna be probably about 30 feet away from the bank and i'm gonna cast up to the very bank and i'm gonna work it because i still believe those fish are pretty close up to the bank but after that nine or ten o'clock when that sun starts to come up that's when i just go ahead and either i cut that line which i usually tend to do both i usually fish them both i'll fish a 5 16 on one rod and i'll fish this one on another rod i wish i had the exact same rod to fish them both but usually what i do here lately is i'll fish that conquest 843 it's a medium heavy i'll fish that little 5 16 and then what i'll do is i'll fish this 7 16 on my 844 it's the exact same hook the only difference is the weight and the only reason i'm doing that is so that i already have one rigged up and say well well why would you go ahead and not just cut this 5 16 off at 9 or 10 o'clock and just tie this one on well the reason why i would leave them both on is because when i get to a pocket that is an obvious defined little pocket on that main lake and it has a lot of brush in it if i throw this bait in there first it's going to go straight to the bottom because it's going to be about 15 20 foot deep so i'm going to throw it in and it's going to go straight to the bottom it's okay well isn't that what you want not in those wood little pockets in those wood little pockets the first thing i want to do is i want to take this little five six chain five sixteenths and i want to pitch it over there and i want it to sink real slow and you say why would you want to do that because i've run into the fact that a lot of those fish are suspended in those little wood piles and when you take this little jig right here and throw it in there and shake it a few times even in that clear water now, there's nothing special about this little jig it's just a brown a little brown and green pumpkin little jig with a green pumpkin trailer but i'm going to tell you what you'd be surprised how many time nice large mouth nice spots they're sitting underneath that brush pile because they're gotten out of the way of the sun now 30 fish can't be in there but you'll be surprised how many time a nice one's sitting in there and he's just pulled up or he's been out feeding in the morning and he's just tucking in there for the day and he's just sitting there waiting for anything to fall out of those wood piles or trees or whatever is around him he's just it's an easy feeding ground for him okay now when i get to those points and i know that those points stick out a ways then i'm not going to throw this little 5 16 if it's 9 10 o'clock in the day then what i'm going to do is i've got that other rod picked up and I'm going to take this 7 16 and I'm going to throw it about four foot off the bank. And I'm going to sit there and wait and I feel it here fill bottom. And then I may hop it a few times and I may drag it a few times. And when I figure out which technique is working the best, and that's what I'll keep doing. So I keep them tied up because as you go down the lake, these are just two different tools. The way to think about it is I've got two screwdrivers in my in, in my belt, okay? If I run across to Phillips, then I use the Phillips. If I run across to a, a flat-sided screw, then I use the flat-sided screw. A lot of times we got so many people, and I did this for years, so I'm not, I'm not pointing any fingers at anybody. I did this for years. I was like, oh, well, you know, 7 16 half ounce, that's the only one there is. Half 3 8 is the best because it does the most of the best worlds quarter is the best because it sinks the slowest and always gets a good bite what i eventually learned into is that i i like them both <laughs> i like quarter three eighths and half and if i had a rod rigged up 
I finally learned that if I really wanted to fish a jig the right way and I wanted to catch fish instead of just brag about which weight I was using, then what I needed to do is I needed to have a rod rigged up with all of them, all three sizes. And what I've done the last few years is I've narrowed it down to these two. These two is what I use 90% of the time when I'm throwing a jig. When I'm throwing a jig specifically to imitate a crawdad to get that bite, I like the 5 sixteenths and I like the 7 sixteenths. I can just about do, and I can change the trailers and do just about everything I want to do with those two right there. And a lot of different people. comments. Like I said, if, if I had the ability to, and I wasn't worried about saving money, and I wasn't worried about, then I would have three rods rigged up. And they would all three be the same rod, and they would all have the same line, and they would all have the same reel, and I would just have three different weights so that when I approached a piece of cover, I could pitch the slow one in there first, and if I didn't get bit, okay, then I'm gonna throw the next one. I'm gonna throw that 7 16 in there. I'm gonna back away from that pocket just a little bit and see if there's hanging any anything hanging in this ditch a little bit further away. So just because I go back into a pocket, I may take this one here, the 7 16 and I may fish that ditch before, I may be 30 feet away from that brush pile. So I'm gonna throw this one and see if I can get a bite on the out on that on that pocket on that ditch that's sitting about 30 foot deep. If I don't get a bite on there, then before I leave, I'm gonna pick up that 5 16 and I'm gonna cast it up into underneath all that brush and I'm gonna work it through with this one. Because another thing in my experience, 5 16 tends to hang up a whole lot less than 7 16 does in that thick brush and anybody's fish cumberland you know what i'm talking about you go into a pocket and there's all this brush and wood and stuff scattered every which way and it's just made a big but what it also made was a canopy and those bass sometimes will sit underneath it and there's thousands of them throughout that lake so it's not just one or two throughout the lake so anyway hopefully that gives you a few little tips hopefully that helps you a little bit hopefully it helps you all catch a few more bass um like I said, um, I thank the good Lord for every opportunity, for every fish that I've caught so far. Um, I'm sure I'll have plenty more days that the Lord's going to bless me or we're going to be able to go fishing a little bit. Hopefully next week I should be able to take. Today I just decided that, you know what, there's so many thousands of people on that lake today. They can enjoy the lake. I'm going to rest my legs. I'm going to sit here at the house and just enjoy not doing nothing for the day and uh next week hopefully i'll be able to get back to fishing so god bless you all thank you very much for sharing the videos thank you very much for uh, all the comments and er all the questions that everybody sends me um i really appreciate it um thank you very much for just all the prayers that everybody sends my way if you ever need me to pray for you then let me know I'll be happy to pray for you. You don't even have to tell me what you need prayer for. You just message me if you want to and say, hey, I just need prayer today and somebody pray for me. Can you ask Jesus to help me? And I'll be happy to help you ask Jesus to help you. Um, anyway, don't forget, Jesus loves you. Y'all have a blessed day. <laughs> yes, it is.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. night. <laughs> he, swall he swallowed my jig. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for that big old smoke, man. Yeah. 